Today, let's use the p-value method in order to solve this hypothesis testing exercise. So the following question reads, it's claimed that a new treatment is more effective than the standard treatment for prolonging the large terminal cancer patients. The standard treatment has been used for a long time, and from records in medical journals, the mean survival period has been 4.2 years with a standard deviation of 1.1 years. The new treatment is administered to 80 patients and their average duration of survival is calculated to be 4.5 years. Write the known alternative hypotheses and calculate the p-value. Is the claim supported by these results at the significance level of 0.05? Interpret the results. Excellent. So the first thing to note is that with the p-value method, if the p-value that we get is lower than the significance level, then we reject the null hypotheses. If on the other hand, the p-value is higher or equal than the significance level, we fail to reject HO. Okay, so bear these in mind for the end of the exercise. Now, the next thing to do is to write the nil and alternative hypotheses. Now, in this example, it says that the standard treatment has been used for a long time, and we know that the mean survival period has been 4.2 years. So mu is equal to 4.2 years. And on the other hand, the alternative hypothesis is that it's claimed that a new treatment is more effective than the standard treatment. Therefore, mu is higher than 4.2, right? Because if it's more effective, it's going to prolong the large terminal cancer patients. Therefore, it would be higher than 4.2 years. So those are no and alternative hypotheses. Let's follow this up by writing down the by writing down what we know. So we can gather from the question that these uh, the standard deviation is 1.1. So S is 1.1. We also know that the sample size is 80. There's 80 patients, and the sample mean is equal to 4.5. Okay. Now here's a question for you. Should we use the Z test or the T test? Now in this case, we are indeed going to be using the Z test, or the Z test, because the sample size is higher than 30. In our case, it's 80. So that's why we know we need to use the Z test. And there's another question as well. Is this a one tail test or a two tail test? So this is indeed a one tail test because the alternative hypothesis says it's higher. And therefore, the shaded area is going to be on the right hand side because it's higher. Okay. Now using the p-value method, this area here is now going to be the p-value. So this is what we need to find out. And in order to find this out, we're going to need the calculated Z value, which is going to be here. Now remember, in order to get the calculated Z value, there's a formula. And this formula is that calculated Z value is the sample mean minus the hypothesized mean over the standard deviation over the square root of the sample size. So let's plug all these numbers in. So 4.5 minus 4.2 over 1.1 over the square root of 80. Now, if you solve this, you should get approximately 2.44. Okay, so we know that this is 2.44, okay? That's the point at which the shaded area starts. Okay, now that we have this, we need to go find that shaded area. For this, we turn to the positive z-score table and remember, we got 2.44 for the calculated z value. So now we need to look at the rows and columns and look for 2.44. So first, let's look at 2.4, all right? So we look at 2.4, 2.4 is here. And then the decimal places is 0.04, right? So then we look to 0.04. And then we join these And we should get this number here, 
0.99266. Okay. Now this number here in our graph where we have 2.44 here. This number here is going to be everything that's to the left of the 2.44, right? So it's going to be all of this. Therefore, in order to find out the p-value, which is here, we need to do one minus this number. Okay, so one minus this number. Because remember, the whole thing adds up to one. So if we know the red part, we can just do one minus this in order to get the shaded area in black. Now, one minus this number, let's see what that gives us. If we plug it in the formula, in the calculator, sorry. This should give us 0 0.00734. 0.00734. Excellent. So this is our p-value. Okay. This is the p-value. So if we go back here, we now know that the p-value is 0.00734. Yeah. P-value. So now we need to decide if it's higher or lower than the significance level, okay? So as we can see, when we compare it to 0 0.05, it is clearly lower than 0 0.05, okay? Because zero is lower than five. So now that we know that the p-value is lower than the significance level, we conclude that we reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so this is our conclusion. We reject the null hypothesis that the mu is 4.2. Therefore, what this means, right, if we put it into words and we interpret the results, it's mean, it means that the new treatment is indeed more effective. Okay, it's indeed more effective. So it prolongs the lives of cancer patients to more than 4.2 years. And this is it for this exercise. Therefore, let me know down in the comments if you have any questions. I'll be more than happy to answer them.